The smart home industry has changed so much in the last couple of years that the entry points into starting a smart home get more confusing each and every day. Now, let's fix that today. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by giving you the five best devices to start a smart home with. We're not going to go down the cheapest and the easiest route here because quite frankly, I want your smart home to be reliable, effective, and do everything you really want it to do. So I'm not going to go and give you the $5 light bulb here unless it truly can meet all of the needs that you're going to have as you go forward in building your smart home. So let's start with the fifth device on the list. And this one is definitely the most complex on this list. It is the Samsung SmartThings V3 Hub. But the reason I tell you that this is one of the most important devices to start with is because it will become the center of your smart home over time. This is a true smart home hub and it will manage most of the automation that you create in your smart home. The reason for that is not just the capabilities that you get with this, it's not just how easy the interface is to, to use and how easy it is to learn, but it also gives you so many options for the devices you can utilize this control through or the devices you can control. And what I mean by that is not only does it connect to Google and Amazon and their voice assistants, but it also connects to if this then that. It connects to devices like Philips Hue and Lutron Lighting. So you have these lighting platforms that it is capable of connecting to as well and then partnering with them on controlling your automation. Now, on top of that, it also has five different transceivers on it. And this is honestly unmatched in the industry. It has Zigbee, Z-Wave, thread, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi capabilities. So it is able to connect to De devices of all those types, although they're not really using the Bluetooth and the thread options because there's not a lot of devices out there, but those capabilities are sitting there waiting for the industry to catch up to where Samsung was years ago when they released that hub. And because of those transceivers, especially the Zigbee and the Z-Wave ones, and the work that Samsung has done over time, you have access to all kinds of devices, sensors, plugs, lighting solutions of all different kinds. You also have access to smart home cameras that integrate. And then, like I said, the voice platforms can trigger all kinds of your automations for you. So it is extremely powerful and would become the center of your smart home. The fourth device is really the Fire TV platform from Amazon. Now, you can go from the Fire TV Stick HD to the 4K version, and you can go all the way up to a Fire TV Cube. Now, you kind of grow with, with your features and your capabilities here from the HD to the 4K. It's really just a jump in terms of some of your HD capabilities and, and that side of things but the fire tv cube the second generation especially here is going to give you some ir device control so remote type of control of your other ir devices so that's an increase in power for sure but it's a big increase in price as well regardless even if you go all the way down to the fire tv stick and that's kind of what i recommend people start out with it, what you're getting is access to hundreds of different services and you also get a little Amazon voice remote with it that is a very nice remote to control your TV and Amazon's Fire TV service. So you don't need a Prime membership if you have one of these. That's one of the reasons I say you can start with this. It has access to so many different services, all the ones you're going to want or most of the ones you're going to want. And on top of that, it has the ability to play little games and pair a controller to it. And while you can control it with voice, you don't need any other Amazon product if you don't want it. And so it allows you to kind of stay platform agnostic and get really good capabilities with that little device. Now you definitely need some smart lighting and this is a controversial topic and I'm just gonna come out and say it. The third device on my list is Philips Hue and their bridge and their overall system for smart lighting. 
The reason for this is while they are expensive and I hate paying the extra premium on their products, they have a list of features that you cannot match anywhere else. And so when you're starting out with your smart home, you're, you're not sure of all of your choices and you're not sure which way you're going to go in terms of even things like voice assistants or other platforms that you're going to integrate over time. Well, one thing that Philips Hue does is they make sure that they have as many uh, branches, I'll say, out from their platform into all the other areas of the smart home industry. Not only do they have very unique products like the Philips Hue Go, which is a smart light that you has a battery in it and you can take kind of all over your home for small periods of time. Very pretty, very unique device, but they also have devices or smart lighting solutions for almost every situation in your home. So you're not going to run into many situations like you will with most other platforms that you start into that you just can't find a solution for. Their reliability is extremely high and there's a couple of reasons for it. Number one, they're a Zigbee protocol hub. So this helps to maintain reliability versus a lot of Wi-Fi options that are out there right now. Now, on top of that, they're also local control. So when the internet goes down, you still have the ability to drive all of your Philips Hue lighting. Not only that, and, and this is kind of the, the depth of it, their integration with HomeKit still works. So if you're an Apple user and you use HomeKit to control your Philips Hue lights, you can still do that when the internet is out. You can actually go and bring in other smart home devices or other smart home lighting solutions. They have a number of light switches that work. So you can go and purchase those. They have a number of other light bulbs that work and everything all the way down to kind of Ikea bulbs. Now I'm gonna stop there. I could go on for a little while longer. They have great automation capabilities right in their hub. They have specialized things with you know, platforms like Google Home where they have the wake up or the sleep routines that slowly fade up or fade down your lighting. There's a ton more to talk about. This is maybe the most important in your smart home and it's also the most boring one. The fact is, as you go forward in automating your home, you're going to end up with a lot of Wi-Fi devices. So, you know, here's a smart display, here's a smart camera, they're Wi-Fi, there's, there's just, you're going to end up with a bunch of these. And as a result, you need strong, reliable Wi-Fi in your home. And whatever you're experiencing now in terms of, you know, like your tablet or your phone going out of a Wi-Fi range or losing connection for a moment, this will be much worse as you go forward and you start adding these kinds of devices, you will have a lot of disconnections if you don't have a strong Wi-Fi connection and a device that can handle a lot more. Now, there's a number of great options out there today. People run incredible systems off of, uh, off of mesh Wi-Fi systems like Orbeez or Eros, which is owned by Amazon, the Samsung Smart Things or the Samsung Wi-Fi, sorry, that's a great platform. Google should have a brand new Wi-Fi platform coming out very soon, maybe even by the time this video is out. And so you have all these great options. There are, there are people who love the Ubiquiti uh, versions and I have an Asus router. I have a single Asus router in my home that is managing over 60 Wi-Fi devices on a regular basis and it's really not struggling at all. Now before we go to kind of the, the last item, I want to give you some basically honorable mention devices. These are all very good but they're just the kind of unique situation types of devices that you may or may not have a place for in your home. And I'm going to give you four devices here very quickly. The Nest Protect CO and Smoke Detector, excellent addition to my smart home. Really no integration to speak of with other things, but an excellent, uh, especially from the design perspective, how that was built and how it monitors your home is just fantastic. The WiseCam V2 is the best budget smart home camera. This is where you can start. Takes a little extra playing with every once in a while to kind of keep it at it top performance, but overall really, really good product there, especially if you're just starting out. I can also tell you about the SwitchBot Hub and their physical switches. 
that device allows you to press all kinds of physical switches throughout your home with your voice through its its integration with these kinds of platforms here so really powerful device there the last one is chamberlain's myq smart garage system and this is just a really simple way for you to make your garage door smart doesn't take a lot of installation work and it does have a little bit of a subscription fee but it's very minor and i think that it's the easiest solution for a smart garage now this won't necessarily be the most important device in your home but i think this will be the device you like the most because you're going to interact with it every day now most people go out and they buy a smart speaker and they go and they get a Google Home Mini or an Amazon Echo Dot and they start there and honestly the experience isn't enough and that's because you went out and you went bottom dollar and you tried to get the easiest entry point that's not where you should go you should go right here these are the small smart displays so this is the Google Nest Hub and the Amazon Echo Show 5 now both of these devices are are an increase in price although they're not that massive during sales in terms of what you can get the little smart speakers for so they're a good budget choice i think still and the additional visual interface is going to give you so much by comparison versus the little smart speakers and they have upgraded speakers versus those smaller versions of the voice assistants. And that visual display, what it really does for you, number one, it gives you access to things like uh, YouTube videos. Both of these platforms or both of these devices have YouTube videos that you can play on them. Now you can ask for those videos to start playing, but you get this little control interface with your hands if you want it. And this includes music as well. As you're playing music, you can move through different uh, songs either by using your voice or you get that visual interface. When you ask for specific search results or ask for how long it's going to take somewhere, you're going to get a map that shows up. And so this visual component becomes so critical over time that really I recommend you go to the now you may still be at a point where you're even trying to decide whether or not you want a smart speaker or a smart display in your home because of a number of reasons there's things like privacy concerns that you may not be aware of or you may be all too aware of but there's there's both sides of this discussion and so I actually wrote a short ebook that explores that two sides of the discussion and helps you make a decision whether or not you want a smart speaker in your home go to check that out it is very inexpensive and it's even free on kindle unlimited so go ahead check that out otherwise guys don't hate automate